Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named Great Array taken from today's code forces round. So this problem is problem C and it's an excellent problem on greedy ideas and some math uh, in order to ensure that a particular uh, constraint is, is met. So in this problem, we are basically given an array of n integers and we need to do the following thing. We need to find out what is the minimum number of numbers which need to be added to the array of n integers such that the array can be split into pairs where the ratio of numbers in each pair is equal to exactly x. So basically we need to answer this for t independent test cases where the sum of all values of n can be up to 2 into 10 power of 5 and for each test case we need to take in the value of n the length of the sequence and we need to take in the n integers and we need to take in this value of x where x signifies that the ratio of every number in the ratio of numbers in every pair is exactly this value x and we need to add some numbers to the array so that this array can be split into these pairs so let's say we added some k elements to the array and let's say that the answer is k then in that case we need to ensure that First of all, n plus k should be divisible by 2 and we need to form n plus, 2, n plus k by 2 pairs where each pair has a ratio of x and this ratio of x basically means that one number multiplied by another number x should give you the second number and um, we basically need to ensure that this condition is met and we need to minimize the numbers added. So let's take an example. Let's say that n is 4 and x is 4. And let's say that these are the four integers 1, 4, 4 and 16. So in this case, you will realize that the pairs could be 1 and 4. That's one pair. And the second pair is 4, 16. So these two pairs are already present in the original array. And that's why you don't need to add any numbers to the array. Let's take another example. The second example for the second test case where the array is 1, 3, 2, 4 and 7 and the size of this array is basically equal to 6 and we need to add or uh, we need to ensure that the ratio is 2 so n is equal to 6 um, this is the array and we need to ensure that the ratio is 2 and now basically let's try to find out a greedy algorithm or basically a greedy way in which we can keep um, adding the minimum number of elements to the array. So let's say you go in order uh, in the sorted order of the array because it's always a good idea to sort the array. So I'll be writing down the steps in the algorithm as we move on with the solution. So the first step is to sort the array which is always a good idea in any problem and then we basically go through each elements one by one. Now let's say we have the first element. We know that each pair has ratio x that's why if you take some number if you take a smaller number in the pair then the larger number will be smaller number times x multiplied by x and that's why the when you go across the array in the sorted manner whenever you reach a number let's say you reach the first number then you know that 1 times 2 will be the next next number that's why you knock off 1 and you knock off 2 both have been visited then you go to the next element which is 2 so you know that 2 times 2 is 4 that's why 4 should be the next element which you need to uh, put in a pair so you remove 2 and 4 and now you come to 2 because 2 is the unvisited element so you look at 2 now you realize that there is no element 4 because all the 4s have been um, removed from the array i'll be explaining how we can implement this efficiently later but now let's just understand the algorithm on paper so we look at the number 2 and we realize that 2 times 2 is 4 and we need to add 4. So that's why we add 4 to the array and this means the cost increases by 1. So we add 4 to the array and um, we basically knock off both of them. So the answer is originally 1. So the answer becomes 1 now. We do a plus 1. Then we go to 7. Even 7 needs to be paired with 14 because 7 times 2 is 14. 14 is not in the array, so we add another plus 1 and we remove 14. So this means 
means that the answer is 2 because we had to perform exactly 2 plus 1 operations. So you can verify that the answer is 2. And if you take another example to understand exactly how this works. So let's take one more example. Let's say that um, these are the numbers. Um, so basically the numbers are 2, 3, 5, 5 and 15. Mm -hmm. And the value of n is equal to 5 is, is equal to 5 and the value of x is equal to 3. So we need to ensure that the ratio is 3 and we also need to ensure that um, the we add the minimum number of numbers to the end of the array. So let's simulate the process again. So we start from the smallest number because we all we have sorted the array already. We start from the smallest number and keep going in increasing order. We take the element 2, uh, we knock it off and we realize that there is no 10, I mean there is no 6. So since there is no 6, we need to add 6 to the end of the array and we need to remove that and the answer increases by 1. Next we go to 3, we realize that 3 times 3 which is 9 is not there. So we remove 3, we add 9 and we remove it. That's why the answer increases by 1 again. Then we go to 5, 5 is present and 15 is present. So the answer does not increase because 5 comma 15 is one pair both of which are present in the array. Then we go to 5 again. 5 is there but 15 is not there. So we need to add 15 to the array and remove it. So this means that the answer is 3 and that's why we will print 3. So this is a simple algorithm which we use um, for finding the answer. You can verify that this works even in the fourth example. And in general, there are very two simple steps in this algorithm. The first step is to sort the array. The second step is to basically maintain the frequency of each element. So uh, I'm explaining the implementation details now. So we can maintain the frequency of each element in the array by using a map data structure in C++. So let's maintain that frequency array. Um, this is a concept which you should know, the concept of frequency arrays. If you don't know this, um, you can just Google it. There are enough tutorials and it's a simple concept. So in this problem, we will maintain a frequency array using the map data structure in C++ and uh, this helps us uh, to efficiently simulate this process. So we maintain this frequency array and we initialize it. We initialize um, from the input as we are taking in the input. Um, whenever we take a number x, then we will increase frequency of x by 1 or we will basically increase frequency of ai by 1 for all i going from 1 to n. We do this initially and then when we go through the array, after we perform the sort operation, we go through the array. Let's see we are going through the array uh, for all i going from 1 to n. So I'll write this a bit clearly below over here. The third step in the algorithm will be to go for i is 1 to n and to each time consider what happens. So each time if the frequency of ai is equal to 0, if it's equal to 0, then we will continue. We will go to the next i value. And this is because this is because ai has already been deleted. ai has already been deleted. And ai is striked off basically um, when we did a pass. So basically ai is deleted and was a part of a pair, was a part of a pair with a previous number. So an example of this would be an example of this condition would be um, when we have the array 2, 3, 5, 5, 15. When we go to the number 5, we delete 15 from the array. That's why at a later point when the for loop reaches this position of this position of uh, position 5, which corresponds to the element 15. In that case, we need to skip the 15 because it's already been covered and the frequency has become 0. It's basically striked out. That's why we will continue. Otherwise, if, if frequency is not equal to 0, then what we will do is we will check if if the number ai times x is present. So if ai times x is present, if the frequency is not equal to 0, then what happens? Then we know that the pair, the pair which we choose is given by ai comma ai into x. So this is the pair which we have chosen. And that's why we will delete both of these elements. And that's why we will basically 
decrease the frequency of AI by 1 and we will also decrease the frequency of AI into X by 1. We basically strike out both the elements from the array and we decrease the frequencies. So this is what happens in case AI into X is present in the array. In case AI into X is not present in the array, then what do we do? Then this means that, um, this basically means that um, the pair AI, AI comma X is not originally present in the array and that's why the answer will increase by 1. We need to append AI into X to the end of the array. So we will increase the answer by 1 and we will decrease the frequency of AI. We will decrease the frequency of AI by 1. However, we will not change the frequency of AI into X. The reason being, we know that the frequency of AI into X was originally 0. Then we append an element AI into X to the end of the array. And then we remove the element AI into X from the end of the array. So this means that we have increased the frequency of AI into X by 1. And then we have decreased it by 1. And the net result is that the frequency of AI into X remains equal to 0. So that's why um, just performing these three conditional statements uh, easily works. The first condition is if AI has been striked out before and it's part of a before pair, we will continue. Otherwise, if it's if it's going to be if it's going to become a part of a future pair and the future number is present in the array, then we will decrease the frequencies of both. Otherwise, we'll increase the answer by one because we know that we need to add the number AI into X and we will decrease the frequency of AI because we know AI has been removed. And the reason why this algorithm works, why this simple greedy strategy works, is because um, if you recall the problem statement, we need to split all the numbers into pairs. And that's why sorting them in increasing order and going through the elements one by one will ensure that either the number was already deleted. So for example, if the number was 15, it will be deleted by a smaller number 15 will be deleted by a smaller number however if the number was not 15 if it was 5 or something then it could not have been deleted by a smaller number and that's why it should delete a bigger number and that's why um, we just need to consider it as the smaller number in the pairs and hence um, this is pretty intuitive to understand that this algorithm will always work these three simple conditions are enough to ensure that we minimize the number of additions to the array and now I'll show you the code which implements the same idea. In the code for each test case, I take in the value of n and x. I use long long for safety because n into x or because um, ai can be up to 10 power of 9 and x can be up to 10 power of 6. So ai into x can be up to 10 power of 15 which is too big. That's why long long is safer. I also have a map long long int comma uh, long long uh, it, it maps a long long to an int and this basically is the frequency map and frequency of i stores how many times i occurs in the array this is what the frequency array basically stores and a of i stores uh, the elements stores the input basically and for each i going from 1 to n we take in the value of ai so we will take in the value of ai and we'll increase the frequency of AI by 1. This is what we will do. And then we will sort the array in increasing order. Sort uh, to ensure that the algorithm works, that the pairing works. And the pairing strategy works only if the array is sorted. Um, it won't work if the array is not sorted because then the order will be random and you're not sure about the elements appearing. So for safety, you should always sort and it's always better to sort the array when the order does not matter. So clearly in the problem, they didn't ask us to pair the numbers in any order. And since the pairing is unordered, um, we can sort and this does not change the answer. And in general, it's always a good idea to sort. So now let's go to the main for loop. So in the main part of the code, we will take in the current value. So um, the current value is given by cur. So if 
the frequency of so if the frequency of the current element if the frequency of ai is equal to 0 we will continue because ai is deleted and ai was part of a pair with a previous number in the array and um, ai is basically ai was the bigger number the number of a previous number of a previous smaller number in the array which occurs before i that's why ai was deleted and ai no longer appears so this will help us keep track of the deleted elements so this has significance uh, in the sense that we keep track of the deleted elements efficiently using this frequency array that's why the frequency array uh, is used and now in the main part of the code which forms the pairs we just need to check whether the frequency of a i into x is not equal to 0 if the frequency of a i into x is not equal to 0 then we know that a i into x appears later in the array and this means that um, a i into x is already present and we don't need to add any elements we don't need to add an element otherwise we would need to add an element so in the else condition we need to add the element and we increase the answer by one and in both the cases we need to decrease the frequency of ai by one mainly because we need to delete the frequency of ai uh, because uh, we are deleting ai we are deleting one occurrence of ai and that's why we decrease the frequency of ai and we also decrease the frequency of ai into x min minus 1 um, because we are deleting a future element, a future number ai into x and that's why uh, we need to decrease uh, the frequency of ai into x. We are deleting over here also we are deleting one occurrence of ai into x. However, in this case we are not really deleting an occurrence uh, of ai into x because ai into x never appears in the array because ai into x isn't present in the array and this means that um, we are first adding ai into x to the array and that's why we are increasing the answer by one and then we are deleting it that's why the frequency the net change in the frequency um, is zero However, the net change in the answer will be plus one because we are adding the element a into x to the end of the array. And in the end, this uh, value of answer is the final answer because that represents how many additions to the array we have performed. And this is the whole code. So I hope you got a very good understanding of the solution and why this greedy strategy is pretty intuitive and why it should be clear that it works. So I hope you like this problem and my solution. If you had any doubts, do leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you.